So where we left off last time was we had created a course and we created a reading list that was associated with that course. And again, just to flog a dead horse here, um, that part of the process, creating a course, um, is only necessary if the faculty member is not submitting their list to us through Leganto and Blackboard. So they, if they're emailing us a file or dropping things off at the desk, we'll have to manually create the course. Otherwise, we can sort of skip what happened in the previous video, and you'll just start with the reading list in your, uh, in your assigned reading list queue. So if I want to work on this list, um, I would click on the little menu button, and I can either click Work On, which would take me to uh, the list creation in Alma, or I could click View in Leganto, which I'm going to do because it's a little bit easier to create and work on a list in Leganto. So this gives me a little bit of background information about Leganto. You can check this off so you don't get to see this again in the future if you're sick of seeing it. Okay, so this is the workspace for Leganto, and I just want to highlight a few key sections. So of course here is the title of the list, and you can edit that if you want over here. This is the course that it's associated with, so it tells me this reading list is connected to uh, AS1000, my made-up course. You can see that it's being prepared, so uh, that means we're just working on it. And this will change to complete once we've finished the list. On the left hand, or sorry, the right hand side here, you can see who the instructor is. So I'm the instructor set up for this course, and if there's any collaborators. Collaborators are people like GAs or TAs, uh, assistants to the faculty member, um, and that will be added automatically if they're uh, privileged uh, to have the, uh, to be in the Blackboard course. So we don't have to worry about that or add to that, like we don't have to deal with that at all. It just tells us who those people might be that could see the list. Library discussion is where a faculty member could potentially add a comment that could be sent to us, and we looked at that a bit before, how to read notes and send notes. Um, so you can come into Leganto and look at notes that exist for this reading list, or you could look at them in Alma. Either way is possible. Here they have some notifications. Uh, so when things happen to the list, things added, or its status changes to, say, from being prepared to complete, um, they'd get notified. Um, my collection, find lists and reports, probably not really important for us right now. Reports is not reports of problems, it's uh, analytics, so how use, usage data. Okay, so the first thing you can see we're being prompted to do is to create a new section. So the one thing you need to know is that when you add citations to a list, they have to go in a section. So we have to create a section for them to be put in. If a faculty member is creating a list in Leganto, it's possible they might say organize things sections by you know weeks of the course or types of materials um, but if they drop things off what we're going to assume is that if they give us a list of citations we're going to put them in in the order that the list gives us unless we're told otherwise so um, basically just following instructions on that so I'm going to create one section here I'm going to call it readings and hit create and now I have a you know an empty section in which I can start placing citations. If you had a reading list in front of you, you would probably have a specific book or article that you would look up at this point. I don't, so I'm just going to be kind of making them up, but uh, the principle is the same. So I have to hit plus to add items, and it's going to tell me search your library for citations. So I'm going to use the search box over here and uh, type in the name of the item I'm looking for. So if it's a book, um, I can search for that, and I can see oh, here it is. Um, it's a physical item, and it gives me some basic information to make sure that I know I'm looking at the right thing. And uh, I can choose the section it goes into. I only have one section, so not a difficult choice. So I'm going to hit Add, and you can see it pops up on my list. And that's it. So as far as like adding the citation to the list, that's all there is to it. We still have to go through the process of changing the location, of course, which is done in Alma. So you can see here that this is being prepared. It's available at Letty Library and on uh, this location. So we know we have to 
adjust the location of this item. This will automatically update once we have, but this is all I have to do to get it on the list. So if I had other books, I would do the same thing. So um, if I wanted to add this one, I can. And you can see they just jump onto my list for me and they give me the immediate availability information. So this is live. And so nice, what is nice about this is that um, the user can look at this and immediately know that a book is checked out or available, depending on the status. Okay, now imagine I wanted to add something else. So if it's an article, so I'm gonna limit my search to articles and you can see what I did there was I chose a different facet. So you can limit your search results by particular types of resource. So I'm gonna look at just articles right now and see if there's something I wanna add. So here's uh, an article from a particular journal. Uh, suppose that's one of the ones on the list. Uh, I can add that. And it's going to show up on my readings here in a moment. So the one thing to remember is you just have to search for the items. And if the library has it in its collection, then it's going to add it to the list. So here it is. And I now have three items. So one thing that's different, obviously, because this is a uh, online electronic resource, it has a view online link. And if I click that, ideally, it should take me to the article. And here it is. It takes me to the Scholars Portal page for the article, and I can download the PDF and read the abstract if I want to. Even check out the digital rights. Look at this. OK. So that's good. I've got an article, the link works, it goes to where I want it to, I've got a couple books, and that's pretty much all there is to the process. It's searching for the articles uh, that we want and adding them to the list when they're when we find them. Now, the next thing you'll notice is uh, over on the search tab here, we've got uh, three different tabs. We've got search, we've got create, and we've got my collection. So the second thing I'm going to look at is the create tab. And this is going to be useful when um, we're adding a resource that isn't um, uh, isn't in our collection. So suppose somebody uh, creates a you know creates a ZPR, or drops off a book, or wants to point to a website, uh, has a report, anything weird, non-standard that's not sort of part of the normal library library circulating collection. This is basically a blank template that allows you to fill in whatever information that you want. So what type of resource is it? So I can change this and say it's an article, it's a book, it's you know a website. There's all kinds of different things. So let's, let's choose a website in this case. So I chose website. And then um, I could also upload a file. The source is where you would place the URL if you're pointing to an external resource. So since I'm looking for a website, that's what I'm going to use in this case. So let's uh, let's do that. So imagine I'm looking at uh, Parliament of Cancer Canada's uh, House of Commons documents here. So let's suppose that. Um, want to bookmark there at this page. So I can copy the link here from the toolbar. And I can highlight it and copy or control copy or however you want to copy the URL. And then when I go back to my form, I can paste the URL in. And I can say the publisher is the House of Commons. And uh, let's see what the date is. The page doesn't give me, in this case, a specific uh, date uh, of when this page was created, but uh, so we'll just have to leave that for the moment. Let's see if I can grab any other information. So I'm just doing this quickly, but you'll probably want to take a minute to double check to make sure you've got everything right, um, and then you can add that to the list. So now you can see I've added the Hansard Index 
uh, to this list, and if I click the view online link, it should take me over there, which is great. So when I use the create form, again, this allows me to add, uh, it's a basic template that allows me to enter in information for any citation, um, whatever it might be. And I can add a URL uh, to that citation if I wanted to, um, or I could upload a file. So it just basically gives me a blank template to add different content. So I'm going to leave it there for now. So that's really all there is for finding things that are in the library's collection, um, or alternatively, creating a citation for something that is to a website or something that's not in the library's collection. In the next video, there's also a tool that I'm going to show you called Cite-It that allows you to import information from external sites, which is all nice and handy. Um, and I'll show you how to set up and use that. If I go back here now, so now that I've added a bunch of citations to my test course, uh, if I go back to the reading list page in Alma that I started on, and now I'm going to work on this in Leganta, or in Alma, I should see those citations that I added in Leganto on this list, which is great. So if there's anything that I need to do to finish off this list, I can, like changing locations of items, I can do that process now uh, and finish up this reading list.